Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. Super happy to have you here today and I've got to tell you I'm really excited about this one. I've been wanting to film this for a while. I have this thing about angle grinders. If you watch any of my videos I use these all the time and they're just good for so many things. You can cut with them, you can grind, you can shape, finish off. Just it's amazing what you can do with these and it's just one of the tools I use the most. Now as much experience as I have using these things I've also got a lot of experience with these not working. Whether that's losing power, power cutting out, stalling just things going very very wrong and that's what i want to share with you today some of those things that i've encountered and my tips and tricks on how to get over them without having to go out and buy a new grinder and the best thing about these tricks is usually you don't need any tools other than something to take the grinder apart which is just a screwdriver so what i'm going to show you guys today is disassembling this grinder starting at the head and working my way down and I'm going to show you the sorts of issues that can occur at each step along the way. And as I said before, all you need to do this is a simple screwdriver. So as it happens, disassembling it in this direction, we're starting off with the issues that are least likely to occur, but are the most catastrophic. And we're working our way down to the smaller issues that you're more likely to be getting. So the first thing we're going to do is turn this grinder over and we want to remove this guard. So we're going to undo the clips and turn it until the pins that are in the guard locate in these holes and we can pull it free. Like so. I'm also going to remove these two clamping holes just to make it a bit easier. Next I'm going to take this handle off because we don't need that. And as you can see there are four screws here so we can start by taking those out. Now you're quite unlikely to have any issues in this section of the grinder. They, these gears are usually pretty tough, but what can happen is over time, these bevels, this one here and that smaller one in there, can become worn over time or damaged due to some kind of impact or just poor design. And that will usually present as the grinder is still making noise, it's still spinning, but you're going to get a loss of power or inconsistent power or a horrible whirring or grinding sound that just shouldn't be there. And if you hear that, then that's quite likely that your gears have become damaged and you need to take this out to be able to check them. Now to check these gears, you just want to look at them closely and make sure that they're all even and every single one is the same and they're not all worn down for any reason. You, you'll see wear marks and as you can see on these, these look pretty good. And just make sure you check that other little one in there as well. If you do happen to have an issue with these, these aren't something you can fix, you're going to need to replace them. So I'd recommend contacting the supplier of the grinder, find out if it's under warranty and you can get a new set of gears. If it's not, they should be able to sell one to you and you can replace those and it should work again. And while you've got this piece of the grinder apart, just check that grease and check that it's in good condition. It should be an even colour and shouldn't have any chunks of metal or filings in there. If you have any of that, any particulates or filings, that could be an indication that something is wearing down or something has become damaged like one of these gears and it's gotten stuck in that grease so you might want to investigate that a little bit further as well. So now we've talked about this part we're going to put this back together and we'll go on to the motor next. If we're happy with the gearing system the next thing we can check is the motor itself and to get to that we need to take this whole metal head off and that's the same sort of thing, there's just four screws down in here. Now again, there's unlikely to be anything wrong at this stage, but it's just worth checking for a service step that everything is working as it should. So if we pick up this section here, this is the rotor part of the motor, the bit that moves. You just want to give that a little spin, make sure there's no major resistance and that it's smooth, there's no grinding. If you've got any grinding sounds or it's not continuing to spin after you've let go, that could be the sign that the bearing is worn or damaged. So you might need to look in there and replace the bearing. And the same for this bearing here, just check it that there's no major issues. And again, this one's pretty good. 
Now as a quick service step at this point, I suggest just cleaning off the motor, making sure there's no dust in there and rubbish because grinding dust will collect in there. So just clean it off as much as you can and that's just going to help it last that a little bit longer. The next thing to look at, if I get my phone light, is the inside of the casing itself. Again, you want to just look for any signs of damage, any signs of wear. There's nothing really moving in this section, so it's very unlikely there's going to be any problems. But while you're here, I'd recommend giving it a good clean out with an old sock or a long brush. Now you need to be a bit careful at this stage if you're thinking about reassembling this. When we pulled this rotor out, there were these little brushes in there which are sprung and they can ping out into the middle which blocks the rotor from slotting back in. And if you look down in there, you can see there's a little brush just hanging loose. So before we reassemble this, we're going to need to take this back piece off to get to those brushes. Which incidentally is the next fault that we're going to be looking for anyway and in fact the most likely fault that's going to occur with your angle grinder. So getting our screwdriver, now we're going to take this back plastic portion off, usually it's only held on with one screw. If you saw my first ever vlog on my channel, you'll see I had a problem with one of my brushes during that vlog and I fixed that on camera. So this does happen quite a lot, it's definitely the most common issue with these grinders. So I'm going to go through now how to check them and how to fix any issues that you might find with them. So to access these brushes, all you need to do is take out the two screws that are screwed into the plastic. And it might help just to use a little flathead to lift that free. Now, if you've not encountered brushes before, the way these work is they're spring-loaded, and what happens is the end of that brush rubs against the bottom of this rotor here. And the reason it's on a spring is because that spins around it allows it to remain in contact and it wears down over time so the spring keeps it in contact as it gets shorter. And there are two of these in your grinder, one on each side. So there's a couple of problems that can happen here. Something can stop this springing back, it could get locked in position at the back there and therefore there's no contact. Or these could actually, if you use this for many years, these can wear down and need replacing. An issue with these brushes will usually present as a complete loss of power or intermittent power cutting in and out. Usually you just lose power altogether because contact is broken. The first thing you want to do is look at the length of your brushes. If they're less than 5 or 10 mil, you'll probably want to keep an eye on them as they will soon need replacing. The second thing to check is that the brush is springing all the way in and all the way out without getting caught up or slowed down anywhere. It should be a nice smooth movement and if it's not, which is what happened in my first vlog, then you need to check what's snagging. In most cases, this bent sheet metal around the edge of your brush isn't always accurately formed and it can cause snagging, in which case you just want to find out where it's snagging and bend it back with a flathead screwdriver. Now before you screw these bushes in, now's a good time to put the rotor back, otherwise when you put these in, they can ping out and it's going to stop you pushing the rotor back into place. So don't forget the plastic cap and then you can position your rotor back in place as it should be. Now the trick to putting these bushes back in is to push it in all the way and then grab the wire that's coming out the back of it and just hold it tight just where you get it in position. The last thing you can do before you put the grinder back together is just check all the wiring in here and make sure nothing's frayed, nothing looks damaged, everything's still connected where it should be. And now we're going to put that end piece back on. So now if you want to check whether this works, now's a good time to plug it in and turn it on. If you're happy that it's working as it should, then you can start to put your pieces back together. you have your newly checked, newly serviced grinder. 
And that's all there is to it, guys. One of the reasons I love angle grinders is they're, they're rugged. There's not much to them. They're very easy to fix and just maintain in general. And if you're ever gonna get yours sent off to get serviced, that's pretty much all they're gonna do to it. Just take it apart, check everything, and give it a good clean. So now you know, you can service your grinder yourself, and you can fix anything that goes wrong with it. Now that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. If you did, please do drop a like, it'd be really appreciated. If you've got any feedback, any comments, anything you want to see, please just let me know in the comments below and I'll read those and get back to you. If you want to keep seeing more tutorials like this, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell and you'll see new tutorials every single week. Plus, I'm working on a few other things at the moment, little projects that hopefully I'm going to get out on the occasional weekend so you can see some more interesting stuff beyond just those tutorials as well. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.